for uh, Tales from the Crypt ology. Um, we're going to talk about some uh, some some crypto mysteries that, that have yet to be solved. Um, my name is Tiberius Heflin. Um, you can catch me on What a Tiberius on Twitter. And if you feel like tweeting about this event, um, go ahead. I love being able to storify my um, my talks. So uh, tweet away. Uh, I good, bad, the ugly, love it all. Um, I am, I am a, well, I'm in flux at the moment. I'm just moving to, to Intel to do, um, security assessments of, uh, open source projects. Um, and my background, I went to university and studied, um, digital forensics, ethical hacking, and computer security in general. So I have a good grounding in, uh, a couple of different disciplines. Um, I'm currently based in Portland, Oregon. Um, however, you may notice I've got a bit of a twang. Um, I grew up and spent a lot of time in Scotland. So um, let's go ahead and get started. Um, in the talk today, we're going to talk a little bit about what cryptography is. Um, what We're going to talk about um, the mysteries that uh, of the unsolved ciphers for the Zodiac Killer, the Beale ciphers, and the Voich manuscript. And then we're going to talk about some of the open source software that's being developed um, to uh, try and solve some of these age-old mysteries. First up, um, I want to talk about what cryptology is. Um, when I was researching this talk, I found that there were a lot of a lot of theories and confusion surrounding what cryptography, cryptology, and crypto analysts, analysts how those three words kind of interact and what they mean. Um, some people think that they're interchangeable. Some people um, break them up into history, statistics, and linguistics. Um, for the purpose of this talk, I'm going to use the definitions as per the book, um, Modern Cryptoanalysis Crypto by Christopher Swenson. Um, we're going to look at cryptography as encrypting and decrypting the code. Crypto analysis, an analysis, oh, I'm really sorry, I'm never going to quite get that word right, I always stumble on it, as breaking the code, and we're going to look at crypto, we're going to use the word cryptology to describe the study of both. Um, also, for the sake of clarity, I just want to throw up some definitions for those among us who may be new to this topic. Being a security conference that's kind of open to the public, you never really know the type of people that you're going to get. Um, so, on to our first mystery, um, that of the Zodiac Killer ciphers. Um, if you're not familiar, the Zodiac Killer um, was active in Northern California um, from the late 60s to the early 70s. Um, he claimed during that period that he murdered 37 victims, but only seven were ever confirmed, and two of those people survived their attack. Now, there was never enough evidence to bring a case against anyone, though there were several suspects. This particular um, killer is of interest to cryptology, cryptology because he would send letters to local newspapers for publication in order to taunt the police. Um, these messages included ciphertext messages um, and only one of which was ever solved. Um, now, newspapers normally wouldn't publish these kinds of um, messages from known serial killers, but at the time when he sent these in, he would send them with a plain text message threatening to do additional, additional um, attacks if they weren't published. Um, and so in um, kind of working with the police, it was decided that it was best for public safety to go ahead and publish them. Um, one of the really interesting things about this case is that none of the messages used the same cipher. Um, they're all different, which is why some of them um, still haven't been solved. Um, now, the ciphertext messages haven't been named. Um, they're referred to simply by the number of characters that there are in each message. Um, pictured here is 408, and that was sent in three parts to three different newspapers. Um, it was actually the only message that was solved, and it was solved by a high school teacher um, and his wife. Um, now, um, in this talk, I haven't actually shown the plain text message of what was just decoded, um, simply because it, it, it's really obscene and, and could be um, triggering. 
The cipher was a homophonic cif substitution cipher, and rather than a one-for-one -one cipher, um, the Zodiac Killer actually, as you can see here, um, used um, several uh, symbols to represent one word or one character. Um, so, though the last 18 symbols um, don't follow um, this pattern and were not um, able to be uh, decoded along with the rest of the message, it's thought that these 18 symbols were um, actually filler to make sure that all three newspapers had the same amount of text, um, just to make it a little bit harder to figure out um, the, the code. Um, in regards to the last 18 symbols, um, attempts have been made to anagram the text um, uh, in, in plain text according to the, the cipher that solved the rest of the, um, the, the, rest of the message. Um, however, there are 700 and, sorry, yes, 740 billion ways to anagram an 18-letter string, um, and there haven't been any successful attempts to really make sense of it. Um, I mean, they, they have come out, they have been able to find words in it, but not anything that would make sense contextually. It's interesting to note that the rotation of symbols um, that was used um, was to, to code the message was actually um, consistent until the last 18 letters, which lends um, credence to the filler explanation. Uh, the Zodiac Killer ap appears to maybe either had been a bad speller or struggled to follow their own cipher key as um, there are spelling errors throughout the text and um, errors almost always seem to be where the symbols that he's, that they have chosen um, for letters um, are very similar, such as most and moat, um, where the um, A is a filled in triangle and the symbol for S is a triangle with a dot inside it. Pictured here is 340. Um, this was sent to authorities on November 8th, 1969. Um, it is still unsolved. Um, there's a number of notable differences between 340 and 408. Um, the most obvious being that the message is 30, or sorry, 68 characters shorter, giving less to analyze. Um, and that the, in regards to the symbols themselves, um, seven symbols have been removed. Um, from the symbols that were used in 408, um, and 16 new symbols added, adding to the complexity and um, making pattern identif identification far harder. Um, so that seems to be the one that um, holds the most promise um, in regards to finding an actual solution. Pictured here is um, 32, and it's unsolved, um, postmarked June 1970. Um, it was accompanied, as you can see, by a plain text message saying that the cipher text would reveal the location of a bomb which was timed to go off, um, but the code was never broken, the bomb was never found. Um, the cipher has 32 symbols in it um, in total, 28 of which are unique, making anal analysis pretty much impossible. It is essentially a one-time pad. Here we have 13, um, that was postmarked April 20th, 1970. Um, it has the same problems as 32, it's too short, um, and eight of the 13 symbols are entirely unique. Um, it's not thought that um, 32 and 13 will ever be solvable due to this. So next up on our tour of unsolved crypto mysteries, we have the Beale Papers. Um, these are really interesting in that uh, they originated from a 1885 leaflet claiming in, that in 1820, a man named jo Thomas Beale buried treasure somewhere in Bedford County, Virginia. And then he supposedly entrusted the ciphertext within a box to an innkeeper who, who held on to these. Um, and supposedly Thomas Beale just disappeared afterwards. Um, I would guess something like a, a hobbit with a ring, um, never to be heard from again. Um, the treasure is estimated currently um, in today to be worth over $43 million. Um, and the cipher text, the, the whole, the papers comprise of three cipher pet text pages. Supposedly the first reveals the location, the second reveals the contents, and the third reveals who the owner 
is or their next of kin. Now, there's a lot of questions surrounding this tale, and some people think that perhaps it's a little bit made up. Um, part of that is because supposedly the innkeeper waited 23 years before ever even opening the box, um, and then he did nothing with the contents um, for three decades until he gave them to a friend on his deathbed, which seems a little questionable. I mean, I certainly know that if somebody gave me a box and then disappeared, I'd want to know what was in it. Um, now, it's claimed that this unnamed friend spent 20 years trying to solve the riddle, um, and he actually succeeded in solving text two, um, pictured here, which um, reveals the contents of the treasure to be gold, silver, and jewels. Um, the key that he used to solve the cipher was the Declaration of Independence with a couple of modifications. Um, how he figured out how to do this is a total mystery. He left no notes or documentations as to how he found this. Um, the other two ciphers, however, um, have proved far harder. Um, as today, there have been no recorded successful decryptions, although um, a gentleman in early, early 2000, I think, um, claimed to have solved them. Um, however, he later died and did not um, leave any information as to how he did so. Um, many people believe that they cannot be solved and that they're just a hoax. Um, and a popular theory um, describes them as, a ma as Masonic fiction and a, an allegory for the parable of the secret vault. Um, I'm not really up with my Masonic history, so I'm not entirely sure what that means. Um, and then our last stop um, on this world, whirlwind tour, and I don't know if I've maybe gone through this all a little bit quick, but we'll get through it, um, is the Voynich Manuscript. Um, this is probably my favorite mystery. Um, I, I find it fascinating. Um, so we can talk a lot about it if you want. Um, now, this here is a page from the Voynich Manuscript, and it's a 240-page book um, that contains pictures of animals and plants that are not familiar to any place on Earth, um, and text which does not look anything like any known language. It's been named after William, William, Wilfred um, Voynich, who acquired the text in 1912 um, when he uh, acquired the library, the contents of a library from a college. Um, now, the document has actually been attributed to a number of authors. Um, it's been posited that, front, that Roger Bacon, a Franciscan friar, um, Albertus Magnus, a German Dominican friar, um, John Dee, an English esoteric philosopher, and Edward Kerry Kelly, a spirit medium who worked with John Dee, have all been suggested as the author. Um, it, it's really interesting. A, a lot of the kind of earlier research on it really tried to suss out um, that it was a fake and who faked it. Um, now, carbon dating has actually um, ruled out John Dee and Edward Kelly as authors, um, and some, uh, and some, some, even though some suggest that Voynich himself manufactured the document, that has also been ruled out by um, carbon dating. Um, other people have suggested that the manuscript is the work of a Raphael Mishkovsky. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that, um, who was a cryptographer. Um, in, at the time, um, who claimed to have um, created an uncrackable cipher, and that it's, it's suggested that this document was his creation in order to prove that this cipher was un, um, uncrackable. There are other theories um, as to the origin of the document, um, and some are more outlandish than others. Um, aliens, fairies, um, it's, it's been uh, very widely um, questioned as to where it came from. The, um, the illustrations, as seen here, um, may provide uh, some kind of clue as to where it originated from. Um, this, particular, this picture in particular um, depicts a castle that has swallowtail crenations, which are, on a castle, 
you have kind of, uh, sometimes you have these, these kind of patterns on top of the castle to protect archers um, from arrow fire when they're shooting down at the enemy. Um, and this particular style um, is common to Verona, Italy. And so it's been suggested that that might indicate where the person who drew them um, came from. Uh, however, analysis of the images within the document um, have yet to be carried out, um, so we're still not really sure. Um, that's gonna, we really don't know anything about the document, so a lot of this is very inconclusive. Um, the language that is used in the document throughout it um, is uh, part of the mystery. Um, Voynich cheese, as it's known, um, is an unknown script. Um, and the, the whole book comprises over 170,000 characters. Um, now, there are 20 to 25 distinct symbols, depending on who you speak to um, and how they uh, interpret that. And the text runs left to right um, with no obvious punctuation. Um, no air corrections appear throughout the document, and the flow of writing is very smooth giving the impression that the text was not encoded um, and that the person was able to just fluently write um, as per their train of thought. Um, it appears to follow um, language conventions. Um, certain symbols appear to have to appear in certain words, just like um, vowels in English. Um, you also have symbols that must appear um, before or after other symbols, some like uh, almost like our, our kind of English rules of I before E except after C and, and so on. However, one oddity is that there, there appear to be um, very few words with less than uh, 10 characters. There are many theories surrounding um, how to go about deciphering this um, and what, what the method was used to cipher it. Um, the letter-based cipher theory holds that the manuscript is meaningful in some language, um, just not one that's known, um, and that it's been intentionally hidden using letter mapping to nonsensical character symbols. We do have a problem with this theory in that the letter distribution does not re resemble any known language. Now, there's additionally the codebook cipher theory, which suggests that the words in the book are actually to be referenced against a separate cipher book um, in order to decode them. However, this kind of cipher is normally used for short messages um, due to the awkward nature of needing um, an additional document that has to be kept um, up to date for the reader and the writer. Um, and we have another theory that claims the text is actually entirely meaningless and that the, um, that the However, it contains details um, with hidden meanings. Um, example, that the, the message is actually the second letter of every fourth word, and if you were to um, systematically map that out, you would then be able to decode it. Um, however, that said, trying to find um, a solution for this type of cipher would be like looking at a needle in a haystack because you have no way of knowing um, if it's the first, first word, or the first letter in every fourth word, or the fourth word in every ten, um, ten letters, it's, it's, it would be very difficult and time consuming to, to find, to, to try each one and see what you can do. Um, the natural language theory surmises that the text represents a little known natural spoken language um, written in an inv invented alphabet where tonal patterns are of importance. Um, it could be the work of a missionary um, who's trying to make sense um, of a language, a new language that they've encountered. Um, the main argument um, is that st statistical properties um, of the text are roughly consistent with Chinese and Vietnamese. Um, and further support um, of this, this hypothesis is that the text appears to break the year up into 360 days in groupings of 15 days, um, which is how the Chinese calendar um, breaks up the year. Um, so there's, there's a lot around the manuscript um, to be considered, and there is a gentleman um, in 
Britain who claims to have um, deciphered part of it. Um, however, I don't know that this has been peer reviewed yet, um, and so I, I haven't really wanted to to include that. But it's certainly something that, I've, if you're interested in the in the document, um, I would certainly recommend looking into that. There are many other unsolved ciphers um, which you can research if if the area interests you. Um, I, I would highly recommend it. It's it's a really fun um, kind of way to keep your mind in. Um, the security game, but still get some kind of uh, enjoyment out of it. Um, there's there's something to to be said for working on an unsolvable puzzle. Um, and there are some really interesting tools that are coming out of the amateur efforts to solve these mysteries. Um, for the uh, Voynich manuscript, we have the Voynich Reader, um, which allows digital browsing of the document um, and it allows you to perform string searches. Um, it also has some interesting um, statistical uh, generation facilities, um, which I've not explored yet, um, but seem like a really interesting uh, way to, to try and uh, solve the, the manuscript. Um, there's also ZK Decrypto. Um, this, oops, that's not what I meant to do. Um, this was actually um, originally created in order to solve the Zodiac Killers um, message 340. Um, however, it's really been built on um, quite a lot um, and it should be able to solve um, homophonic and monophonic ciphers. Um, so it's, it's an interesting uh, tool to play around with. Um, I, I would highly recommend it um, if you're looking into any of these mysteries um, that you, it's, it's a good go-to tool to start playing around with. Um, it can solve the uh, 408 message um, on its own with very little interference. There's also a cryptos Cryptoscope, which is a tool for um, computing statistics and searching for patterns and substitution ciphers. Um, or cipher text, sorry. Um, and there's Cryptocracker, which is uh, freeware that can solve over 45 different um, classical cipher types. And in many cases, um, without being fed um, any plain text for, um, to use as a key, which is really quite an advancement. Um, then there is also uh, Seraphs, which um, is kind of just a bit of fun. Um, it's, it can actually be used to um, procedurally generate um, code text um, based off the void, or not code text, uh, just text um, based on the Voynich manuscript, um, which can be really useful um, if you want to provide um, some props to your D&D &D group. So um, I'm afraid that I've maybe gone through that all a little bit quickly or underestimated how long it would take me once I got up on the stage. But um, I really want to say thank you for your attention. Um, you've been great. Um, and does anybody have any questions? Um, I don't know that there's a solid answer to that. Um, it's just that there's, I feel like I should have an answer for this and it's completely gone out of my mind. Um, there you go. Thank you. Anybody else? Great. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>